Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the Legends of Chess 2020, day two of semi-finals and just a reminder for those who, who didn't watch them the first games from the from the first day of semi-finals, Magnus Carlsen won his match uh, and also Jan Nepomniacci won his match and here I would like to show you the game from day two of semi-finals where Magnus Carlsen, current world champion, gonna play as white against Peter Svidler. This is the game number one. So without further ado, let's see what just happened on the board. We have e4 by Magnus Carlsen and c5. So um, this time Peter Svidler chose to play Stilian defense. We have knight f3 and now d6. Uh, d4, so Magnus goes for the, um, for the pretty standard open variations of the uh, Sicilian defense. C takes on d4, knight takes on d4, and now knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4, knight c3 defending, and now a6, knight or variation of Sicilian defense, one of the most solid, one of the most um, famous um, and most popular openings in the in the chess history. We have bishop to e3, Magnus goes for the main line, and here Peter Fiedler has a choice. The main line would be, uh, would be e5, so this was possible, however Peter uh, chose another line, however I would like to just show you how it goes, just to get the main ideas. So knight b3 and after bishop to e6, f3 and preparing the attack on the king side. Um, and then after bishop e7, queen d2, uh, black castle on the king side, white castle on the queen side, and knight b to d7 and after g4, b5. And, and it's very, very sharp variation, both of the sides, you know, attack. So I made you, you made me and who's gonna be faster than of course gonna win the game. So that is the main idea, uh, main line, e5. Uh, another idea, uh, important idea in the Sicilian defense, which is easy to miss sometimes, uh, is knight to g4 uh, with the annoying attack on this dark square bishop, which is pretty interesting. Uh, however, uh, white gonna play bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, now g5, uh, bishop g6, bishop g7, uh, bringing the, the bishop on this diagonal. Um, h3 kicking the knight, knight e5, knight f5 with the attack on the on the bishop. So black would be forced actually to exchange the light square bishop here. Uh, and knight b to c6 and the game can continue. Actually, this is also one of the of the main lines, however, uh, quite less popular. But Peter Fiedler goes for just another variation and plays e6, Scheveningen variation. And now he creates this um, pawn center. Uh, uh, for now, the, the black looks like very, very passive, but once the position is open, it can be very dangerous as well. So um, the, the idea is, of course, in the right moment, play d5, which uh, it's not always possible. Uh, we have bishop e2 by Magnus Carlsen. Uh, this move is actually um, against uh, this, this knight on g4, because Magnus wants to play queen d2, so this bishop gonna control g4, that's the idea. We have queen c7 and now queen d2 as planned. b5 by Peter Fiedler, uh, attacking already on the on the queen side and asking Magnus, are you sure you want to go for the for the castle on the queen side? Um, we have a3 uh, playing against, of course, uh, b4 attack and now bishop b7. We have f3 strengthening the, the the pawn in the center, also preparing the attack on g4 if the if black want to castle on the king side and here in move 10 we already have quite a critical moment uh, of the game because how to continue as black bishop e7 is possible knight c6 is possible knight b to d7 these three moves are the main moves in the opening however uh, we were lucky to have Gary Kasparov actually um, in the studio and he commented on, on that and he said uh, that he played that position of course and knight c6 is the way to go here and and now, uh, what is the what is the point of that? Because after castle, uh, it's you know it's very risky. However, black has the counterplay. B4 can be played, uh, and after a takes on B4, knight B4, and black gonna have some counterplay on the on the king side. And he won a couple of games, you know, in this style. 
However, he said also after knight b to d7 is not that great because black not gonna have the counterplay. That is the problem. Magnus Carlsen castle on the queen side and here Gary said that black always have to consider white to sacrifice on, on, on b5. Actually not even sacrifice uh, but exchanging the knight for three pawns and why three pawns? Because after queen to c7 and knight d7, black doesn't have counterplay on the on the queen side, uh, and also another knight comes with the check. So I will just show you how how it could go. Bishop e7, and this is the idea: knight d to b5 and after a takes b5 knight b5 the queen is under attack and also the pawn on d6 is under attack so um yeah this is the problem let's say queen d6 and after king e7 uh rook h to d1 and white gonna have very comfortable position with the three connected past pawn and, and also pair of bishop against the the bishop and two knights so um pretty okay for white white just stands better so this is why um playing knight b to d7 together with the queen c7 is not the greatest idea however uh, nowadays in the 21st century uh, this is played from time to time uh, and the main idea is immediately play d5 uh, and this is what peter svidler actually played he takes on d5 uh, and now how to continue knight d5 is the main line and after knight d5 bishop d5 bishop f4 uh, kicking the, the the queen out of c7 queen b6 and now knight f5 very interesting idea now uh, black can equalize actually we have couple of draws in this um, in this continuation knight f6 can be played here also the castle uh, and after queen c3 the the king can go to b7 so these are the main ideas and there are a couple of games in the database which all of them were drawn um, and of course the 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 knight cannot be taken because the the bishop is under attack and now this knight is under attack the the rook is under attack so rook a7 is is actually forced but rook h to e1 and look how dangerous is that let's say bishop e7 and after bishop f1 black even cannot castle here knight f6 kicking the, the the queen but now rook e7 sacrifice the the exchange but of course it's it's completely winning because now rook e7 uh, queen queen e8 and that would be a checkmate so it's not even possible king e7 is forced and after uh queen e5 with check king f8 and now bishop e3 uh and and it's difficult even to to defend uh, okay maybe maybe try this way but bishop c5 uh, pinning the rook and it's all too much okay queen queen e6 but now rook d8 with the check and it's all too much just simply exchange all the stuff uh win back some material and at the end uh, white gonna have pair of bishop against the the knight of course that's winning so this is why in this position you just cannot take this knight uh however knight to d5 wasn't played by Peter Svidler he goes for bishop takes um, on d5 and now we have bishop f4 queen to b6 and now knight f5 was played in that position so this is one of the best move in the position in this uh, Sicilian defense however Magnus even highlights that and play rook h to e1 this is quite a novelty very strong novelty look at these rooks uh, in the center and king still stays in the center now uh, how dangerous is that i will just show you uh, you know some slow move like h6 it doesn't make much sense however the idea is that the bishop can be sacrificed uh, with tempo actually so now this rook is operating you know uh, it's fully operational the pawn is pinned this is the main idea so after knight d5 knight d5 knight e6 f e6 uh, queen actually can win back one of the minor pieces also attack the the knight attack the rook and also this rook gonna attack on e6 uh, and black cannot defend that it's it's just unplayable 
So black definitely cannot play any slow moves uh, and maybe try to castle on the king side. It's also too slow because knight f5 keeping an eye on the bishop and also on g7. So if castle the bishop is lost, if no castle then g7 is lost and finally if um, uh, you know pushing g6 uh, then king gonna stay in the center. So that's not possible you know facing these rooks is just suicidal. Uh, according to the engine b4 would be the best however it's extremely complicated because now okay the knight is under attack so knight d5 is the very natural choice knight d5 and now knight e6 isn't that attractive as the bishop is still on e2 but it's still better for white with a lot a lot of complications so look at this f takes on e6 and after bishop c4 opening the, the e file black actually has some resources b takes on a3 and now white have to be extremely careful because there is a checkmate on b2 so there are two ways to avoid that one is b3 which leads to very complicated game and one is to actually exchange the two rooks for the pawn and the queen uh, so i will show you both of these lines b3 first and after a2 uh, king b2 castle by black so uh, now bishop d5 e takes on d5 queen d5 and now black actually can win this bishop uh first queening uh, and after that uh, you know win this bishop which is unprotected you know hanging pieces king a2 uh, queen f4 but it's not so clear you know uh, how black gonna continue black has two extra pieces however it's not enough because after rook e8 look at this move so um, deflecting the rook if the rook actually takes the rook the, there are some mating ideas here very dangerous so bishop d6 connecting the rooks here uh, but now rook e4 kicking the queen queen f6 now this is extremely dangerous now queen can also go to to c6 uh, so probably black would just be forced to to exchange the queen for the for the rook and after rook f6 knight f6 this is still slightly better for white the game is extremely complicated still okay queen a7 now the queen gonna take on g7 and it's completely open position so black gonna have the problems with you know consolidating and creating uh you know some coordination between the pieces uh for now the king is in the center uh, the knight is hanging if this rook takes the rook on d1 then of course this rook is hanging so extremely uh, complicated position uh, something which would be you know uh, more easier to calculate would be rook to e6 okay exchanging the queen for for two rooks this way uh, but it's still you know a quite unbalanced position uh, let's say knight e7 and after king b1 let's say uh, queen a4 uh, with the idea of winning a6 pawn so uh yeah that that actually would be forced and white is still slightly better however keep in mind that black has five pieces so if they uh, manage to actually consolidate the position that can be very dangerous also for white so this was the way to go probably um for peter Fiddler. however he he castle on the queen side which is also the idea however his game are uh, gonna be much more difficult for now bishop e Tree. with the very simple threat knight d to b5 uh, you know can be played with the discover attack on the queen so uh, peter Fiddler actually went for queen b7 however the engine recommends here uh, knight c5 knight c5 it's uh, pretty strange because you know the, the pawn is still lost so knight d to b5 and after 8 b5 b4 and the the knight is of course uh, pinned so let's say king b7 now knight b5 and after rook c8 uh b takes on c5 bishop c5 bishop c5 queen c5 and let's say bishop d3 defending c c2 so uh just extra defense is, is always good and after bishop c6 going after the defender of of the a3 pawn uh then queen b4 exchanging even more pieces so let's say bishop b5 uh queen b5 a queen b5 bishop b5 and white gonna have these two uh past pawns however they are isolated so um that's all black actually can get uh from that position so 
it's it's pretty complicated. Queen b7 was played by by Peter Fiedler, uh, and now interesting that knight d to b5 is still on the board, and position of black is extremely difficult. Uh, another knight gonna jump to b5, uh, queen gonna follow to c3, uh, and white gonna have a very strong attack. But Magnus doesn't want to sacrifice the, the piece, he simply want to win the pawn and he plays a4, undermining this, this pawn chain. Uh... And here Peter Fiedler plays b4, so he avoids the, the exchange, however, the a6 pawn is now under attack, the bishop is, uh, you know, attacking a6. For now, the queen is defending, however, the queen is, you know, never great defender. Uh, knight is under attack, so Magnus exchange for the bishop on d5, we have knight d5, and now knight b3. Uh, queen to c6 and now queen d4 bishop to d6 now connecting the rooks uh, and finally developing the dark square bishop however it's quite too late knight a5 attacking the queen defender of the pawn and now if the queen tries to win for example this pawn the problem is bishop a6 delivers a checkmate okay this is a checkmate on on b8 or or, or on c7 this is a checkmate so it's not even possible uh queen to b6 defending the pawn actually doesn't work as well because queen c4 with the discover attack on the on the queen and after bishop c5 bishop c5 and now if the knight takes then this knight gonna gonna be lost and white gonna win the the piece so that's not possible even knight e3 uh with the with this fork doesn't really work because uh simply uh queen c5 and uh white gonna have extra bishop and win the game uh, and if queen c5 is slightly more complicated but it's still much better for white queen a6 uh, king c7, now queen b7, king d6, and now bishop b5 is very strong. King cannot go to e7 because uh, this knight is hanging, as this pawn would be uh, would be pinned, so it's not possible to defend the, the, the knight. So queen c8, trying to exchange the, the, the queens, but now knight c4 with check, king e7, and now queen d5 wins, uh, again, wins the piece. So it's not even possible, you know, to continue that with extra piece. White, of course, is 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 winning. So uh, Peter Fiedler doesn't even bother to to defend that that pawn and play queen c5. He wants to exchange the queens as fast as possible, uh, and Magnus Carlsen uh, is okay with that. Bishop a6 with check king c7 and now knight b7 very nice family fork so white actually forcing uh, black to exchange even more pieces uh, we have queen d4 rook takes on d4 and now rook a8 uh, avoiding you know losing the exchange however the knight still can take uh, on d6 this is what magnus carlsen did uh, and now rook a6 doesn't work because uh, after knight f7 white gonna win yet another pawn and after let's say rook c8 uh, b3 and white gonna play with two extra pawns so uh, we have king to d6 however it's it's pretty much the same because after bishop b5 this pawn cannot be defended peter Fiedler played knight f6 however after bishop d2 uh, magnus carlsen gonna win uh, just you know another pawn on b4 uh, and with three past pawns connected past pawn he gonna win the game so after bishop d2 uh, peter Fiedler resigned and i would like to show you um the standings after day two of the semi-final so here we go as you see magnus carlsen won his second match so he is in the final uh, congratulations and jan nepomniashi he won the first mini match however anish giri again the same like in the chessable masters uh, he managed to win the, 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 the second match and he equalized the score so today they gonna play again you know uh, for the final and today we gonna have the last match last match so be or not to be in the final for Jan and also for Anish Giri so uh, yeah that's all for today I hope you enjoy it and if you like it press like if for some reason you didn't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other games press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one